much as it's painful to talk in this way after a weekend like this, I just have to remember that there'll be races in the future when we've executed those things, when we're back more on the front foot and where we're progressing. Hi, I'm Cameron. I'm here with James to answer your questions about the Chinese Grand Prix. James, how did the two park ferme rule affect how we approach the sprint weekend? Actually, quite a big difference. The sprint weekends normally fill the engineers with a degree of trepidation because they'd in the past been just one frantic hour of getting everything ready and then you've sort of sealed your fate for the weekend and you just have to watch that play out like clockwork, either good or bad, for the remaining sessions of sprint quali, sprint race, quali, real race. This time round, a very welcome adjustment for this year, we have the sprint race uh, and the uh, main race separated by a period where we can work a bit on the cars. Two periods of Park Ferme, sort of opening it up so we can do some alterations at the end of the sprint race before the main qualifying and then onto the real race. That is great because it sort of gives you a chance to rescue yourself if you've made a mistake in the sprint part of the weekend. And so something that we were quite pleased with, quite happy to see go into the regulations. Unfortunately, it's also a double-edged sword. So if you use that period wisely, great. You can then be better for the main race, the main event, um, than you were in the sprint race. But if you, if you screw up in that second adjustment, then it can actually be worse for you in the, in the main race. But I think overall, it's a great change to the rules, allows more flexibility through the weekend and something we were looking forward to. So why did we only use the hard tyre for the one practice session that we had? Good question. We'd actually scheduled to run two two tyres, two different tyre types in that session and uh, changed the programme as we went along. And what really was the driving factor on that was the track felt so far off where it was going to be in in the later sessions that we didn't feel that we it was worth burning one of our precious more high performing tyres, the type of tyre you're going to use uh, later in the weekend, we didn't feel it was worth using one of those up when the track was three seconds a lap off representative pace. So we elected instead to just sort of toil our way through that first free practice session, trying to get the car a bit more happy on those tyres and just accepting that we wouldn't look good on the leaderboard at the end, but we would know that later on in the weekend we would have another tyre set compared with our our competitors. That, that was what we chose to do. It wasn't what we'd originally planned, but with the track as it was, it made sense at the time. So of course the rain played its part during sprint qualifying, but did we expect to, to be able to hold on to P2 during the sprint race? Uh, if I'm honest, no, I didn't, didn't expect that we would hang on to P2 because I don't think the car's quick enough to merit that at the moment. The rain was uh, a tricky thing for everybody in sprint qualifying. I think got to take our hats off to Lewis for absolutely getting it together um, in incredibly difficult circumstances in that sprint quali. And the cars were going off the track left, right and centre. And he, he hit it very cleanly and deserved, deserved that place, that P2 on the grid. But in the dry conditions of the sprint race, felt we were likely to get um, swallowed up by uh, the two Red Bulls, by, uh, by others as well, um, because, because we do have a pace difference to the leading cars at the moment, and there's no point denying that. However, we were, I think, a little bit, uh, you know, things went our way a little bit with the way that Norris fell off, off the pace, did a poor start and disappeared backwards. Um, and with Fernando then um, being at the head of the faster cars, they took a while to find their way past him and uh, that bought us some breathing space. I don't want to downplay the achievement because I think it was a very, very well controlled drive by, by Lewis uh, who got the absolute max out of the car in that day. And it was a welcome tonic for all of us to, to first of all put the car in a decent grid slot and then bring it to the flag in in that same position but I think I think the circumstances of the race helped us a little bit with Fernando acting as that buffer between us and the faster guys. How is it for the team to be back racing in China? 
But I wasn't personally there, but I obviously I was in touch with uh, all the folk who were all weekend, and I was also seeing what what all the fans saw on the TV as well. And uh, it was a very different China, I think, to the last times we were there. It's been a enforced break of a few years, and we're back in a circuit which I'd say in the pre, you know, the the period before COVID. I don't think we ever really set the Chinese hearts aflame with F1 back then, and and the crowds were a little muted. This time round, completely different. Uh, I think having a Chinese driver on the grid, um, and uh, and just the the burgeoning popularity of the sport has has totally transformed it. The grandstands were full, the crowd roaring, and it is it's always a brilliant experience being at a track when the crowd wants to be there with you and is enjoying the experience. We didn't have the best weekend we've ever had, but but the uh, the but the uplifting effect of of the enthusiasm of of the supporters there made it made it a really a really excellent venue for us to be at. Why did Lewis only set two timed laps in Q1 and why wasn't he able to progress into Q2? I was talking earlier on in one of the first questions about the uh, this a change to the rules, the, the two-part Fermi uh, rule, which allows us another stab at setting up the car between the sprint part of the weekend and the, and the proper part of the weekend. And I, I said this is a very welcome rule change, but also a double-edged sword. If you, if you make the wrong choices between the sprint part of the weekend and the main event, you can end up making the car slower and, uh, and, and suffer accordingly. And you don't get any, although you get this opportunity to adjust the car, your first taste of the adjustments you've made are in qualifying in Q1. So, so if you've if you've chosen poorly, uh, then you will suffer, and the first time you'll know you're suffering is is when it really counts. I would say, well, I don't need to guess about this because Lewis was absolutely explicit about it afterwards. He said he really wished he had taken the same approach that George had taken, which was in his uh, first run in Q1, George fueled to do two timed laps so that he could have a feel of the car in the first flying lap, do a cool down lap, and then have another bite at the cherry, um, which would just give him more of a feel for the car. Whereas Lewis went later in the session, one time lap, one time lap. And, uh, and Lewis was very clear afterwards that he needed another lap. He had, he'd found that he'd, the changes he'd made were, had made the car more understeery. They'd made it easier for the car to lock up under the braking. And, uh, and he was just pinching, pinching those front brakes uh, in a way that was causing him difficulties. And well, I think we all saw what happened on, on his second run, which only his second timed lap, therefore, uh, he just running down the main straight into that bottom hairpin. He just got a little bit out of shape on the braking, went deep, um, and that's 0.7 of a second just there. That's a you know quite a big a big gap without which he would have easily got through to Q3 and uh, and whatever. So you know he would he would hold his hand up and say my mistake, my error. I think we would be a little more rounded and say we should have should have actually encouraged more strongly that he was pursuing a program a bit more like George's, so that's our mistake. And we should frankly be making a car that is just not so tricky as the one we've got at the moment, which is causing the drivers to make very uncharacteristic errors. You know, we have two, two of the best drivers in the world and, and locking up at the end of a straight into a hairpin is not, not in Lewis's sort of recipe book and it's it's a consequence of the car being too tricky so how do you think that the race went overall you know it's funny we i've been doing these post-race debriefs to the world for many many years and uh and it's it's obviously a pleasure to talk about things when you've had a great race and it's lovely to sort of recount the pleasure of seeing your car do well it's somewhat less pleasurable to do the same when when things are not as enjoyable when the car is not as good but i think one of the things i'm proud of this team for is that we have consistently come out and talked about how things have gone honestly whether good or bad never tried to sort of dissemble in any way and it was 
you know, in, if you stand back in at some level or other, it was a competently executed race. Um, Lewis started in a very lowly grid position, managed to get in the points, did a lot of uh, good overtaking to to bring that about. And George George drove a capable race without error, um, and you know finishing sixth was creditable with with the car as it was. But the Chinese uh, track is famous for being a front limited circuit, so one where when you when you ask the car to go around a corner, it will generally be the front tires that that go. No, thank you. I don't want to turn. Um, and uh, and we we've had something of a car a front limited car all year, especially in the lower speed corners. And that was really amped up to 11 this weekend. Um, once you've got front tires that don't want to go around the corner, that means the drivers have to wait an eon to get on the power on the exit of the corner you hemorrhage lap time there. And in Extremis, in actually to make the car go around the corner, they have to boot it around the corner with the throttle to sort of loosen up the rear end somewhat. And that kills the rear tire. So you, you, you end up overheating on the rear as a result of being front limited. There's no pleasure at all to be taken from a weekend, which even though, you know, competently executed and well driven by both guys, uh, no pleasure at all when the hardware itself is not where it needs to be or should be. That's of course the challenge of, that we face in the coming races is to, is to try and uh, move both the setup of the car and also the pieces that we bring to the car uh, so that that's improved. You know, we've got upgrade packages coming to the car, but also components that we hope will rectify the underlying balance that is is causing us difficulty. And much as it's painful to talk in this way, after a weekend like this, I just have to remember that there'll be races in the future when we've executed those things, when we're back more on the front foot and where we're progressing, where the pleasure of talking about it will be massive. And uh, I'm just, you know, that day can't come soon enough. So after the sprint weekend, has the team found anything new within the car that we can progress with? Every weekend you go to, you learn things. It's one of the truisms of F1. It is a learning race. And the although you have a factory full of tools, you have a load of compute, computational power, a load of people who are thinking about it, there is no place to learn about the car better than with the car at the track doing what it's designed to do. We head from China, one of the most famously front-limited circuits, to Miami, a track that is more in the rear-limited end of the spectrum and our challenge will be to make sure we don't try and replay China at a Miami that is a very very different beast and wants different things from the car than than China will and we uh, face the enjoyment of another sprint weekend with this second go of having two bites of the cherry and we definitely learnt during this weekend that um, that if you're going to be ambitious, be ambitious in the sprint race and then tune it down for the main race rather than the opposite way around. And hopefully we'll, we'll land a car in a better place, uh, that the upgrades that we're going to bring to uh, Miami um, serve us well in a grid that in qualifying at least is really close. Around the part of the battle we're fighting, a few hundredths can make a difference sometimes and a couple of tenths would make all the difference in the world. So looking forward to seeing how that all plays out.